Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, da 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 da, you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. <laughs> the ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! Yeah! Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. If you're of the faith, good Friday. I hope you have a terrific holiday weekend. I'm Jay Crawford. Over the next 30 minutes, remember when Marvin Harrison Jr. was rubber-stamped as the number one receiver to go off the board in the draft? That might not be the case anymore. Uh, I'm Adam the Bull, and I'm going to tell you what, what the Guardians can do to get fans excited and pumped beyond opening day in a week and change. G. I am G. Bush, and as you can see, I am of the faith, but I don't have faith that Donovan Mitchell coming back <laughs> makes any hill of beans to the Cavaliers. Wow. Mm. Earl. And I'm your boy, Earl the Pearl, and I'm going to tell you why Kevin, Stan- Kevin Stefanski is the better cornerstone franchise option over Deshaun Watson. Wow. That That's going to be a fascinating discussion, and not. I'm shocked that you're going that way. I am surprised You can pick that. one as a franchise yeah. cornerstone. Are you taking Stefanski? Or are you taking Deshaun Watson? That discussion is coming up. And by the way, I'm shocked that G. Bush doesn't think that he's going to be the savior, Donovan Mitchell, when he comes back. So a lot of good things to get into. We have to start with the Guardians, obviously, who opened their season, 2024 season, in impressive fashion last night. 8-0, they beat the Oakland A's. Does it count as a full win because the A's look like a minor league team? I checked the standings this morning. They are indeed 1-0. So apparently Major League Baseball counts that as a full win. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I'm going to start with you, Bull, because you teased this to open the show. Yeah. What do they need to do in this 10-game road trip to start the season to create some buzz coming home for their home yeah. opener on I mean, April The Lake? reality is, you know, Jay and I, you and I are diehard baseball fans, so we're locked in. But for the more casual fan, in this town, the Browns own the town. So for the Cavs and the Guardians, you got to do something special to get the casual fan. And to get the casual fan after an offseason where the big most money they spent was on Austin Hedges, a backup catcher, for $4 million, you got to start on the road and have a great road trip. So if they could go, and they can, especially starting with Oakland. Like, they better win at least three, if not sweep the whole series against Oakland. If they go 6-4, and four, but really, if they go 7-3, and 8-2, and two, or gosh. Nine and one, something crazy. Oh, this town would go nuts if Bananas. they come home nine and Then one. you come home. The women's final four had just been here. You got opening day. You got the eclipse. Everybody's in a great mood. Hopefully, the weather's finally getting nice. If the and if the Guardians can capitalize that, especially if they win opening day, a lot of people, casual fans, build momentum off the home opener. They do, you know. And if they, they'll be buzz coming into the first home stand, and a lot of excitement. But they got to play great on this road trip, yeah. and they got off to a great start. It's so important. Yep. And not just for Stephen Vogt, who's now starting yes. his career as a manager, but as you said, bring some buzz, bring yes. some energy. What, what's your answer to that question? Uh, well, since you stole my 7-3 and three line, I'm going to go ahead and say, mm. listen, the, the magic number is 6. If you can be putting up over 6 runs a game, I think you'll get six people excited about what you're doing because the, the, the natural thought process is that the Guardians don't have sticks. There's nobody to, to really drive in runs, hit the long ball. If you can score six runs a game and you can have guys hitting home runs uh, and, and, and putting the ball in play. Last night, everybody that, that got in, in, that was on the lineup card, got a hit except for one. That shows that, you know, you do have some, some hit capable hitters. If you could keep that up going into, you know, these next three series and then come home, and, and pe- show people when you wake up in the morning, get ready for the coffee. Oh, I know they played at 10 o'clock, but hold up. Dang, the Guardians got six, seven. They got eight runs, nine runs. Yeah. That's what we like to see to get that excitement going when they get back home. Uh, unfortunately, by the way, they might get rained out tonight. It's supposed to rain in Oakland I all know, day bad today. weather. Let's hope that it doesn't. Game a little earlier tonight, 940. And yeah, which yeah. means we won't have to be as tired on yeah. Saturday when we yeah. get to sleep in as we yeah. I'm I'm kind of dragging today, but they, you said this earlier. Yeah. At least it was a quick game. It was. It was nice and tidy, two and a half hours. We yeah. didn't have to stay up until after one o'clock to watch it finish. My bar's pretty high here because, Bull, you mentioned that we're diehards. Yeah. If they came home anything but three and seven yeah. and worse, I'm super excited. Yeah. You know, I you, the to me, the bare minimum is you have to have a winning record. No doubt. You have to have a winning record. Now, that's a tough ask because – as you know, the West Coast road trip, uh, 10 games, 
is that's a tough mountain to climb. Yep. You know, the good thing is there was no body clock readjustment. You know, like normally, true. If, yeah. you're, if you're playing New York, or, or you end a series here in Cleveland, and then yeah. you start a road trip in Oakland, the first game, your, your bodies haven't adjusted. Yep. By the second game, there's still lag. Right. And then maybe by the third game, you're up and going. That's why teams typically start these West Coast swings with a couple of losses. They're able to go in there with their bodies are already on West Coast time. Right. Training in Arizona. So there's no excuse. They should win at least three of four from the A's. Yeah. But if I could write my dream scenario, here's what it would be. First and foremost, you have to have complete health from the starting pitchers. Already their bullpen has some nagging injuries, some dings here and there. Yep. Um, and that's, that's a little worrisome. These guys last year, like Carlos Carrasco wasn't even on the club. It's great to see he's back. But when you look at Bieber and McKenzie, who to me are the one and the two in this lineup, they spent most of last season hurt. An injury to one of these guys in the first 10 games is going to be like popping the balloon. The air is going to be out. We're going to say, here we go again. So I like the fact that even though I wanted to see him pitch seven innings, I like the fact that Shane Bieber only went six, had a low pitch count. You can stretch him out gradually. I like what Steven Vogt's going to do there. Keep these guys healthy. Yeah. Win seven of ten. A dream scenario is if they win eight and ten, they're the lead story for yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. in town. And, and real quick, to your point, you're 100% right about the injury because, you know, for, for my other team, the Cubs, I have similar expectations for the Cubs as, a, as the Guardians. I think they're both around the 500 team, maybe a little better. Yesterday, the Cubs lost their opener. And their best pitcher, Justin Steele, got hurt. He's going to go on the IL. I'm already in a sour mood about them. Yes. You feel sick. Yes. And that's the way we started last year. Yes. Because they had the injuries early. And that's how you you got to avoid that. Got to avoid that. So avoid the injuries. Start on a nice tear. Worst case scenario, you've got to be 500. You've got to be 500. Worst case. Because four of these 10 are against a team that really looks like Stinks, a minor league yeah. club. Now, I mean, Seattle's good. They got good pitching. That'll they do. Be That's, I, series. Yeah. Take a split. Take yeah. wit, one or two. Yeah. Just, you know, you got to come home with a winning record. Okay, next up, um, Earl surprised me with this. So I already know uh, his take on this. But I thought it was a fascinating question. The question, as it was sent to us in our rundown this morning or last night, you can pick one of the two to be your franchise cornerstone. And you need both, really, to win a Super Bowl. You need that cornerstone coach and that cornerstone quarterback. Patriots did it for years with Brady and Belichick. Chiefs are doing it now with Reed and Mahomes. But you can only pick one. Are you taking Deshaun Watson, or are you taking Kevin Stefanski? Uh, this is easy. Coaches, coaches, and players play. Like uh, I love the fact that you're a coach, and you can dial some things up, but there's seven, eight, nine, ten other 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 coaches on the roster that do things. Like, say for instance, you're a coach and you're a head coach and you don't call the plays. So on the day to day, you do what? You motivate people. Well, you're the CEO of the program. You're, you're, the, you're, C- you're the CEO. You're picking the point on the horizon. So I don't know very many CEOs that can do it without that dude, that quarterback. Okay. At the end of the day, uh, Deshaun Watson has not played up, up to where he is. But if you take a look at it and you say Kevin Stefanski, he's not calling the plays. I've seen Mike Prefer get a playoff win. I'm not diminishing it, but I- I've seen coaches win in this league. There, to me, there's only a couple of coaches that are at the top of the food chain where you say, I value what they bring to a team outside of, you know, just calling the plays. Right. That they're that high that I'm going to take them over a player, especially a quarterback. That's fair. Obviously, the quarterback is way more important than the head coach. I don't. To me, there's no debate there. But on this team specific, here's what I know. I know I have a very good head coach. I, or at least I believe we have a very good head coach. No, he's not Andy Reid. He's not Bill Belichick. That's unrealistic. Well, he's they one. weren't either three years At, into their career. Right. right now, but I know he's a really good coach. Right. I don't know that I have a really good quarterback. I don't know that. Right. I know Desha- Deshaun Watson was a very good quarterback, but the last time he was a very good quarterback was 2000. That's a long time ago now. Hey, I, 2000? No, 2020. Uh, I didn't say, I didn't say anything yesterday. <laughs> At, 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 it's old. 2020. Yeah, I, I don't know what he is as a quarterback. Yeah. Now we can play all the the gymnastics we want. He was four and one. The second half Ravens. If you're being real with yourself, you know he hasn't been a very good quarterback since 2020. Yeah. So until I see that, if you told me that Deshaun Watson this year was going to be the Deshaun Watson from 2020, I'd pick Deshaun Watson. But I don't know that he's ever going to be that guy again. I'm right. concerned that he won't be at this point. 
So I would take Kevin Stefanski. Yeah, uh, I agree 100%. I also agree with your initial part of that take that the quarterback is the bigger piece. Is it 70-30 quarterback coach, 60-40? I don't know. Yeah, who knows? I don't but, know. Yeah. But I know that your odds of winning a Super Bowl go up dramatic if you have stalwarts in both. Yes. You can You can win one with just one of the two. But look at the last 15, 20. Go back to the Patriots. Like, it's predominantly they had both. Yes. But if I have to pick one, to me, this was easy. Number one, the shelf life of a coach is far longer than the shelf life of a great quarterback. You know, a a good coach can coach in this league 25 years. Belichick has been around longer than that. Now he's out of the league. But so, uh, uh, to me, the coach can go through two or three different quarterbacks in his tenure. Also, I don't know how many MVP awards Deshaun Watson has. By my count, it's none. But Kevin Stefanski is a two-time NFL head coach of the year. This is blasphemous. Yeah, I don't think that's this a fair blasphemous. I don't think that's what, a fair comparison. What's wrong with that? Uh, because if you today, if you ask today, yeah. do you want Deshaun Watson, if Deshaun Watson was, was suspended the whole entire year, or Kevin Stefanski was suspended the whole entire year, which do you think would affect the Browns the most? You can't even it's not debatable. No, I, I agree with that. But that's in the micro. That's one season. But he could get this fired the, in the macro. No, but no, <laughs> but this was the cornerstone of a franchise. So my Wait, assumption, but, by the way, the yeah. question was worded was the cornerstone, not, not would, for a minute. You, you agree right. that if we had, if if the last two years we had had Houston Deshaun, you'd pick Deshaun. You know, I'm not sure that I would because oh, I again, would, again, Deshaun Deshaun comes with a shelf life, a definitive shelf life. Like these guys, forget Tom Brady. He was the outlier of all outliers. The shelf life of a great quarterback is 38 to 30 to, to 40 years old, and and I'm talking about your Hall of Fame quarterbacks. By all accounts, how many quarterbacks have 10 years of tenure with their team right now? Very, very few. Right, but... So, I, what I'm the, saying is... I think the great I'm quarterback... I'm looking at it, and I get your argument, like, next year, who do you want? Well, yeah, I need a great quarterback in the micro. But I'm talking franchise cornerstone. I'm talking 25 years. Deshaun Watson's going to be a memory right. long before that time comes up. Kevin Stefanski could still be coaching the Cleveland Browns. I, I hear you. It's I just, unlikely, but I, it's possible. I mean, Kevin, listen, Kevin Stefanski could also be Marvin Lewis. He could gets be. To the he never, and never wins. You're right. He I, flipped I, you, you. I flipped you, Bull. You're yeah. on my side. No, now. you're so, right. I mean, he's, no, he's 0 2 in playoffs. <laughs> the only reason I'm picking Stefanski <laughs> is because I don't have full faith in Watson right now. That's it. Right. If I had faith in Watson. And, and that's part of my argument, too. If you told like, me, if you told me, uh, uh, you know, that. I mean, you tell me Andy Reid or Patrick Mahomes, I'm taking Patrick Mahomes, and I think and Andy Reid's the best coach in football. Of course. But I'm taking Patrick Mahomes any day of the week. Right. And and, and that's all yeah. it all weighs into my answer too. We haven't seen MVP Deshaun Watson in Cleveland. No. I, for a minute we saw that in Houston. I haven't seen it during his time in Cleveland. I have seen Kevin Stefanski do his job by by the voters in the league. Yeah. Top in the league, two out of his four the, seasons. My only argument with that is it, that award goes to the most surprising success, not the not the best team. I mean, it is called the coach of the year. I hear it's not you, the but, most surprising coach of the but year. But that's who they always vote for. It tends to that's go what, to the yeah. coach that overachieved. Right. Based on what he was given. He seems to do his best work under adversity. You, I, I want you to make your point because you teased it at the top. So for me, the question was cornerstone. Kevin Stefanski, to me, is one of the pillars of the culture change for the Cleveland Browns. Okay. You alluded to the fact that, you know, NFL stands for not for long. The average playing career is 3.5 years. Right. We've seen Kevin Stefanski with numerous different players on his on this team. Succeed. Because he's a leader of men, because he, he played a significant role in the uh, culture change, is why I'm picking Kevin Stefanski. All right, very good. Now, he hasn't succeeded enough. you got to win no, when it matters. No, I, I need more, too. But right yeah. now, com- I'm comparing what Deshaun job. Watson has done. Yeah. Stefanski's right. done more. Much better. All right, uh, quickly, I want to tell you about our other offerings here with the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. We have the Ultimate Cavs Sports Show. That is with host Mikey McNugget and Jason Lloyd. The Ultimate Brown Sports Show. Our man G. Bush leads the parade there. And now the Ultimate Guardian Sports Show. That has Zach Meisel and Adam the Bull. You're not going to find a better panel. And before we go to break, you can tease y- your show because it's four different shows 
that we offer. And then you got the Ultimate 216 show with me that gives you Cleveland sports, life, and culture where we highlight people in the city of Cleveland that's actually doing something positive. What else can you ask for? When we come back, Kevin Mitchell is back. Some think he's going to save the season. Not G. Bush. He'll tell you why next. Welcome back to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. When we were going to break, I said, can Kevin Mitchell save the Cavs? Uh, that's a definitive no. Yeah. Kevin Mitchell hasn't played professional <laughs> baseball in 25 years, and he damn sure isn't coming back from the dead to, <laughs> to help the Cleveland Cavaliers. But Donovan Mitchell, yeah. I think he can salvage the season, but I have to start with you because you say no. No, um, Donovan Mitchell's coming back, you know, and, and he'll, he'll have a little boost in the regular season, but let's be clear. Uh, everything that the Cavs want and, and, and are fighting for is in the postseason. I think that they have two, uh, you know, the continuity is not there. Uh, Darius Garland has not been playing where he is. And, and to be truthful, it's not about Donovan Mitchell. It's about the others. It's, it's what, is Evan, what is Evan Mobley? What is uh, Darius Garland? Can they get back in, into the swing of things? And this, this core four has not played well together the entire year. Let's just be clear. When they went on an 18-game winning streak or 20 games, it was Donovan Mitchell, and it was Evan, or it was uh, Jared Allen playing uh, well, one four out, one in, and they have not been able to introduce the other two guys into the mix. I don't think that Donovan Mitchell is going to raise them past a, a second round at best. I, I think they'll win the first round playoff game, possibly. Would be a step forward for the, last year, depending on who they play. But yeah. I don't think he's going to currently make a big in the four seed. I, I just disagree with Jay. I think Kevin Mitchell could help this team. He brings some toughness. <laughs> He would bring some toughness. They to the would squad. be tough. They got Morris. Now they can bring Kevin Mitchell in. He'd be fighting guys. It'd be it'd be great. I listen. I'm with G. I, I don't think Donovan Mitchell can save the day. I know that that great stretch was great, but well, the great stretch was great. Uh, but a lot of it, let's face it, was against bad teams. You're not playing bad teams in the playoffs. I, could they win a first round series if Donovan Mitchell is healthy? If they play Orlando or or Indiana, sure. There's no way they're going further. They're not beating Boston, Milwaukee, or the Knicks, who are, the, who are probably going to be the top three seeds, so they'll have to play one of them. I just can't see any way that they're good enough because even if Donovan Mitchell's back, is he going to be 100%? Mm. And the, the others are just – Darius Garland has had this great opportunity, and it just feels like kind of a lost year for both him and Evan Mobley. Yeah, yeah sadly, I, I tend to agree with you guys. I'm an optimist here, so I'm going to hold out hope. Sure. And – I know that it was against inferior competition, but, bull, they were winning by an average of 30 points yeah. per game. They weren't you know, squeaking by some of these teams. I know what this team is without Donovan Mitchell. They are a below – they've played over 20 games without him. They're four or five games under 500 yeah. when he's not on the floor. They are a below-average non-playoff team if Donovan Mitchell isn't on this roster. I do know that when Donovan Mitchell is in the lineup leading the team as the primary point guard and ball handler – and using Darius Garland in a different role, that they went 18 and two with over right. a stretch, and that was without well, Darius, Evan Mobley. Darius wasn't there for the whole stretch. He wasn't there for the whole stretch, it, yeah. and Mobley wasn't either. Yeah. But for for the bulk of that 20 game stretch, it was Jarrett Allen and Donovan Mitchell, and it was four out and one in. They've got to get back to that, and that might right. be that might include stepping on some egos and mm -hmm. bruising some feelings. But I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm not yeah. here for another one and done. They have got to win at least the opening round playoff series and take the second round series to the distance. Or Donovan Mitchell yeah. might just walk away from oh, this Oh, man, thing. if they lose to Indiana or Orlando in I the first round. I think mean, it's catastrophic. I'll, I'll make this assessment. If they lose in the first round, I think we've seen Donovan Mitchell's time in Cleveland come to an end. And I, I wouldn't want to come back for if that. If they lose in the first round, I think everybody's gone. I think JB's fired. I think uh, I Kobe agree. Altman's fired. I agree. This would yeah. be a much different looking Cavs team. And quite frankly, it's scary to think what this team will be with Garland and Mobley as the centerpieces because yeah. they've been middling with them as the centerpieces Not good. this year. Backwards All today. Right. Uh, we're going to take this a break. Year. When we come back, all during the college football season, it was mostly a foregone conclusion that Marvin Harrison Jr. was going to be the top receiver picked in the draft. But will he be? That discussion's next.
Welcome back to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Hope you're enjoying your Friday. We've got one topic left. This is going to be interesting because I thought that Marvin Harrison, not only did I think he was going to be the first wide receiver taken, before the season started, I said he's going to be first off the board. And I still think it's going to be Caleb Williams, and I still think that's going to be a massive mistake. But neither here nor there, a lot of folks now, according to Adam Schefter and others, are saying that it's not Marvin Harrison Jr., but Malik Neighbors, who ran like a 4-3-5 at the Combine, and had, this was astonishing to me, had the single best season by an LSU receiver ever. I don't need to list the great wide receivers that have come through there. Some teams are saying that he's going to be wide receiver one off the board. Should he be? And lost a mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice that he ran a nice four three eight. What did you think he was going to run? All these guys. Some said running. he was a four five four six guy. Uh, he, that four three only is there to verify what you saw on tape. You saw on tape he was explosive. You saw on tape he could catch the ball. You saw on tape he was a playmaker. But let's not be. Let's be clear. Marvin Harrison Jr. six foot four probably runs around that same type of speed. Pedigree. Pedigree. Route running is off the charts, could play anywhere. Marvin Harrison Jr. is, I'm not going to say light years better than neighbors, but to me, when you look at the pedigree, the build, the production, who you playing against, he's been that guy. He will continue to be that yeah. guy. I think everything I've heard, Malik Neighbors is going to be a great player in the NFL. I think they both But he's will. not going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm with you. Mm-hmm. I think this is all nonsense. There's always stories like this that go around. It's teams playing games or whatever. The first non-quarterback off the board is going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. I don't think there's any doubt. I, yeah. I'd be stunned if it was anybody else. I will too, but you know it's the bright, shiny object that draws the attention Some at teams, the draft. I think it's stupid teams. And yep. somebody might yeah. move up. To, to make that move, yeah. um, it, it's going to be really interesting to see how they fall off the board. I'm staying with my prediction that I made two years ago when I said Marvin Harrison will certainly be the first receiver taken when he comes out. And, and, and there was a point last year when I said, no, he's going to go overall number one. I just think Caleb Williams is still a risk. But if you just compare Marvin Harrison Jr. with, with Malik Neighbors, I think Neighbors was the benefactor of having a much better quarterback. I think we can all agree that yeah, LSU sure. yeah. had the Heisman winner. He was a far better quarterback. It's still very impressive that his season last year was the single best season ever at LSU. Yeah, it's amazing. Jefferson, Beckham, Chase, uh, Chase yeah. uh, uh, Landry. Yeah, I mean, like, the list goes they've on. Had, it's yeah. like wide receiver U, and the fact yeah. that he's had a better single season than anybody else, I can see why the temptation is there. But in my mind, Marvin Harrison is what I like to call a draft him and forget him. Yeah, yeah. You don't think about wide receiver one for 10 years after you select this guy. His dad is a Hall of Fame, was a Hall of Fame wide receiver. He's, his, his dad had a notorious work ethic. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. has the same work ethic. I think he's the first wide receiver taken. I agree with you. Yeah. I think they're both going to be perennial Pro Bowl receivers. Yeah, I think somebody's got a smoke screen. I think somebody want Marvin Harrison oh, Jr. to fall to him. They're putting I, misinformation they're, so, out there. So all these dudes that's like, oh, Malik Neighbors, we love him. Yeah, go ahead and take Malik Neighbors. <laughs> so we can go ahead Again, and get it's that. Not, it's not a knock at him. He's uh, a hell of a player. I, like, but, I yeah. mean, when you see, listen, when you see Marvin Harrison, you, you see like, oh my good, like just the physical size. Like, Remember the catch he made last year that we, we – had yeah. a freeze frame of it. Well, he yeah. was bending over. Ninety nine percent of his body was out of bounds and almost on the ground. But it's insane were, and, to pass on and, him. And those guys talk about you're taking a quarterback. Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. All they've done is come in and get a thousand every year. Yeah, like, yeah. they've been in the league. right. Yeah, and he was on the same roster. They was like, oh no, 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 yeah. that guy. Uh, to your point, I didn't think about this, but to your point about the whole misinformation thing, I, th- I think you're right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I-, I saw an interview. This is what tells me Jim Harbaugh can stand in front of a camera. He can <laughs> sell cigars to a nun. Oh, uh, yeah. The question was, what do you think of J.J. McCarthy? Best quarterback in the draft. No question. Best quarterback in the draft. And he went on for two minutes about how yeah. J.J. McCarthy is the best quarterback in the draft. I don't even think it's close. Well, he wants someone else who needs a quarterback yeah. to make a trade with him. Right, because they're high. There. He's got a high pick. He's, the guy is a master con man. If he loves him that much, then trade Justin Herbert. Go, that's what go. I said. You love him so much, deal Herbert, and you yeah, play with that's him. Right. You may have loved him in college. I think he he's going to be a bust in the NFL. I'm convinced. I don't think he's going to be a success in the NFL at all. He reminds me of Mac Jones and Kenny Pickett. I think he's that same level of quarterback. Now watch, we'll he'll see. go on to be Tom Brady part two. Yeah, man. Because Brady coming out of Michigan excited nobody. Man. And look what he went on to well, do. Well, but he's, 
But he's going to be a first-round pick, though, unlike oh, he will. Unlike Brady. Yeah, Brady <laughs> slipped to the sixth round. I think yeah. because of that, no Michigan quarterback will ever slip to the maybe, sixth round ever not. again. Yeah. All right, I think we, uh, we've done it all. We've done we the have. Browns, we've done the Cavs, we've done the Guardians. I hope everybody has a terrific holiday weekend. If you're of the faith, happy Easter. Uh, enjoy your family, enjoy the holiday, and we'll be back here Monday. Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, the YouTube show starts every day, bright and early, 11 a.m. Have a great weekend.